Ready? Ready. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you here this morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Again today, God, we thank you, God, for this another opportunity you've allowed us to come together to worship you in your word. We thank you, God, for all your many blessings, God, that you bestow upon us. And Father, again today, we're asking that the Holy Ghost would come and be our teacher, that he would show us what you would have us to know through your holy word. Father, it will go down into the heart. Father, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you will, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in the uh, 11th chapter of Acts again today. <clears throat> I think we got down to about uh, verse 23, but I'm going to start back reading with 19 so we'll understand what's being said here. He said, it said, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about seven traveled as far as Sinus and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians of the Hellenists or Sadducees, which preached unto the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. <clears throat> Something that I noticed here, uh, now these uh, Hellenists or Sadducees, they were very strict in their religion. But it says here, a great number of them believed and turned unto the Lord. We don't find that today. Seems like when somebody gets steeped in a, a religion or a denomination, they'll stay there. Very few of them ever come out of it. Verse 22, then, then tidings or the news of these things came into the ears of the, of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Now, as I said last week, we see we first saw Barnabas in Acts 4, 36 to 37, where he, he was one of those that sold things and they had all things common. 23 said, And when they came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Now that word, uh, uh, cleave unto, cleave unto uh, in the Greek, it, the, the Greek word for that means to per persevere in. Uh, we don't see people right now persevering in the Lord. It, it don't take much to get somebody to uh, quit. Some little thing arises that they don't like in a church or or maybe even outside of the church, somebody said something to them, uh, uh, they'll quit. But this morning I was thinking about, <clears throat> now we're studying about Peter. And, you know, Peter, we find Peter denied Jesus three times. You know, if there's ever anybody that, that ought to uh, quit when Peter failed, it was him. Well, I've messed up. God don't love me anymore. This is a great lesson for us. Don't quit. Just because somebody said something a little something, you got to understand, we have got a, an enemy that's roaming around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And he'll use whoever he can to devour you if you will allow it. You know, you as I've said so many times, we got to have more backbone than what we've got today. If we don't, we'll be just like all everybody, everybody, and we'll just cave in when when something comes comes up. You know, Satan knows his time's limited. Satan knows the gospel as well as anybody, because it's been preached too many times. Any word that's out there, Satan knows about it, and he knows his time is short. So he's going to do everything possible to defeat the kingdom of God because he still, I believe the, the rascal still believes he can overcome God. But he's not going to do it. I've done read the back of the book. He's not going to do it. You know, 
But, sad to say, he is going to take a whole lot of people with him because Jesus said there would be many on the broad road. And so, so that, that's what we've got to do. We've got, we have got to stand up to this. And verse 24 said, for he was, he's talking about uh, Barnabas here, he said, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. You know, as we said before, we need we need to live a life like Barnabas was led, so other people can want what we got. If I'm just like every other Tom, Dick, and Harry out here, who's gonna pay any attention to me? You, you've got you've got to live a life separate. Pa Paul told Titus, he said, you've got you've got to be a, a peculiar person. And that word peculiar means beyond usual. You're not like everybody else, you know. So, verse 25 says, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. <clears throat> the word uh, Christians there means a follower of Christ. You know, the Bible tells us that we're not to take the name of the Lord God in vain. But, if I say that I am a Christian, and then I'm not doing according to to the word of God, then I have taken the name of the Lord in vain. That's a hard, that's a hard thing to say, but that's that's the way it is. You know, this this thing uh, of beating around the bush has got to stop. We've got to tell it like it is because one day the Bible tells us we are going to be judged by His truth. You find that in Psalms ninety six. You're going to be judged this book. You know, if you are. If you won't know, if you want to know, you know, if you <clears throat> if you were to go to get some type of a license and you have to take a test, you know, they, sometimes they'll give you a little book of, of something that that uh, the questions might, might be asked, you know. Well, if you want to know what the judgment's going to be, read this book. You'll know exactly what you're going to be judged on. You know. Verse 27 said, In these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that he should be, that there should be a great dearth or a famine throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. <coughs> now Claudius Caesar, he reigned from A.D. 41 to 54. But this man, Agabus, we'll see him again in Acts 21 and 10. And this is the first time we're in, the, uh, in the Bible or in the book of Acts that we see prophets mentioned in the, in the church. It said, Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto brethren which dwelt in Judea. Now, Notice back there in 28, it said he prophesied that there would be a great drought over the whole world. Well, the word uh, world, there, it is used and viewed by the speaker. In other words, this is the, the surrounding area that he knew about. It was not over the whole world because we had, the <clears throat> it says the brethren would send relief which would dwell in, in Judea. Uh, you can't send relief if you've got the same drought they've got. So it was just over a, a, a certain person, certain certain area. Uh, uh, let me mention too, that the name Agabus means locally. In verse 30, which also they did and sent it 
to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now we're going to see uh, a lot more of Barnabas and Saul here in, in a few more chapters. So that, that ends the 11th chapter. Anybody got any questions or comments over the 11th chapter this week? Chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex, the word vex means to harm certain of the church. Now this was Herod Agrippa. Remember now, the, the term Herod, that is a, a, a title. He was the grandson of Herod the Great and is appointed by Caesar Claudius. And he was a people pleaser. One of the worst things you can have in government, and we've got it today, is a bunch of people pleasers. Well, this, this group over here wants this, and they're going to contribute X, X amount of dollars to my campaign, so when I get in office, I'm going to do what they want. That very same thing is happening today in America. And it's taking us down the wrong road. It said, Verse 2 said, And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. <clears throat> now, this is James is, a, is, is the son of Zebedee, uh, a brother of John. Verse 3 said, And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter then were the days of unleavened bread, or it was the time of Passover. <clears throat> Let's go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. This is Jesus speaking here. Jesus said, The things have, have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he did God's service. This prophecy that Jesus gave is now coming to pass. You know, uh, religious people as I've told you before, religious people are some of the meanest people in the world. They'll do whatever it, it, it takes to uh, keep their doctrine going. And so here, <clears throat> Herod, because, because when he killed James, the religious people liked it. He's going to try to kill Peter. Isn't it sad that that happens still today in the church? Because somebody come into uh, uh, some church or denomination and they, they have a different view of the Bible, they've got their own opinion about it, and somebody comes in to tell them the truth, they, they will do their best to put them out and kill their influence. Well, you know what they are. We don't want them in this church. It's so sad. But that's what about to take place. We're fixing to come up with two different churches. We're going to come up with a true church and we're going to come up with a false church. The false church is the one you're seeing in the book of Revelation. But the true church is going to be the one that you're going to see go with Jesus Christ when he comes in the air. Verse 4 said, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, in other words, what are you seeing here? Four quadrants. Remember that in the, in the Roman time, there was four watches during the night. So he, he has delegated 16 soldiers, four, four soldiers to each watch to watch over this one man. 
He must have thought he was really a bad dude to have to take 16 men to watch one, one poor little fellow. You know. But I think he knew that, that this man, Peter, he had power. We have already seen Peter and John raise up a, a, a lame man. We've, see, we've seen other miracles that, that Peter has done. So he knew that this man had some power that he, didn't, that he did not have himself. And so he was, he was not going to allow him out in the end because he could cause him some problems. In verse 5, it said, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church and to God for him. That word without ceasing there, it means fervent. Let's go to, to James 5 and 16. James 5, verse 16. It said, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The affection, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's different, different meanings of that, but one of the meanings of, of the word fervent is an active prayer, a sincere prayer. You know, it's not one of these, uh, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. It's not that type of prayer. I mean, you are very sincere in what you're praying. Verse 6 says, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and keepers before the door kept the prison. Now, now you know I said that he had four soldiers per watch to, to watch Peter. Here this man is we would, I'll use the term handcuff. He's handcuffed between two. We've got two, two other soldiers out here on the gate. And Peter, and Peter is asleep. Would you be asleep if you thought tomorrow they was going to take your head off? Peter, Peter, Peter knew what was going to take place. I mean, Jesus had already prophesied and told him what... What a ministry that he was going to have. So, so Peter had the faith. He wasn't going to worry about it. He knew, he knew things was going to be all right. And we've got, to put our, we've got to have that kind of faith in God today. I don't care what happens to me in this life. I know things are going to be all right on down the road. You know, he, Paul said, to die is gain. We look, we look at it in our lifetime. Die is lost. No, if you die in Jesus Christ, it's a gain. Because there'll be no more of, of this junk in heaven that are with Jesus Christ that we're going through today. No pains, no sorrows, fussing and fighting. It's gone. It's all going to be peace and joy with him. Let's look at Hebrews 1 and 14. Hebrews 1, 14. It says here, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? That, that, uh, that word that to minister means, or for means, to own the behalf of. In other words, here we have with Peter, God has sent an, sent an angel to minister on Peter's behalf of where he, him being in prison. Verse 7 says, and Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the, in the prison, 
And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, quick, quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. <clears throat> People think, well, th things like this won't happen again today. Well, he, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It can happen again today, just exactly like it happened with Peter, if we have the faith that Peter had. But we just, today, you know, the Bible says that, uh, Paul said this, we walk by faith and not by sight. Sad to say, we've got too much of the church walking by sight. We believe it like we see it. You know. Peter had confidence that things were going to be all right in his life, so he just said, he just fell asleep. He's going to get him a good night's rest. You know. But, w but we, we today, we, we have... We have been dumbed down by religion saying, well, God don't do it anymore and this and that and that. No, God is still God and what he says is going to come to pass. Don't believe just because somebody is a good man, don't believe things that he says that is contrary to the word of God. Because uh, <clears throat> Paul told Timothy that in the last days, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And the reason why those people are deceiving other people is because they're deceived themselves. This thing of tradition's got to stop. I think we're going to find a lot of people in this community is going to find out. They're going to they say, "Oh, we're going we're going to heaven. We're going to be with God." You know, they they they're expecting to see the the streets of gold, but when they wake up, they're going to see the flames of hell. Just because. You've been to an altar and you've, uh, and you've been through baptism, got your name on some church book, that don't mean you're going. Jesus said that he is in the earth to the end, the same shall be saved. And, I, and I've said this many times. I heard a pastor one time and said he didn't believe that. You think I'd stay in that man's church very long? No. Somebody that contradicts the word of God, you better get out of it. Because they're leading you down the wrong road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God's got to work for you. You know. And you got the only way you're going to do the work is through the truth of the gospel. Well, he said he got a, he was uncalled. Well, if he was truly called, the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the thing about it. I, I've heard others say this. You know, uh, Grandma called me to preach. You know, <laughs> Grandma told me when I was a little boy I was going to be a preacher. Yeah. I've been told a whole lot of things not happened in my life. I'm, let, let me let me expound just a little more on this. When it, you can have a call of God on your life, but you have got to cooperate with the Holy Ghost to bring that to pass. You know, you, you know, somebody can give you a prophecy that this or that is going to happen in your life and you know that that's going to happen because you it's been in you for some time. But you have got to follow the leading of God and, and it may take a long time before it ever comes to pass. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to war for it. Yeah.
Well, this is, but this is like the military. This is boot camp. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you have got to go through some training. You've got to go through some hard times. You don't know who you are until you've been tried. You know, and, and God will allow you to be tried. You know, because you, you have got to know for, <clears throat> for yourself who you are. If you don't know who you are, you're not going to be able to stand because the, the winds of adversity is going, it's coming. It's already here, and, and, and sad to say, it has blown a lot of people away. They're back, they're back out there where they were to start with. You know, because you, as she said, you've got to fight for this thing. You know, <clears throat> why, why is it on Sunday morning the bed always lays the bed? It, it does, you know. But you've got, you got to fight that thing. You've got to get up, and you've got to make a sacrifice and get ready and get, get to the assembly of your, of your people. Well, you know, in one sense, uh, this is like like mining for gold. You got gold that's several feet down under the ground. How bad do you want that gold? How much are you going to dig to get to that? That's the same. It, it's the same analogy with with Christianity. You know, Satan will, will come with you with, with everything that appe appeals to your flesh to get you out. You know. And he and the sad the thing sad thing is a lot of times it's it's the people you love it's the people in your neighborhood the people you you have respected in time past as a kid growing up they are, they are in tradition and they will lead you down the same road that they're going if you're not careful well our, our time's up for today so we'll, we'll pick up God willing death uh, next week about verse 8.